Hello everybody, my name is Will, and I am currently absolutely cooking in my office. <laughs> we're we're going to try and uh, cook in terms of building a tank as well. We're going to be building a modern-ish, well, hopefully modern-looking MBT today. Uh, so fingers crossed I can pull it off without it looking absolutely ridiculous, so <laughs> wish me luck. Uh, we're going to jump straight into building this so I can uh, kind of have my fan on again. I'm going to try and turn it off on my speaking bits uh, because it, you can hear it on the mic, but uh, it is absolute. It's like 35 degrees in here. I need it on. <laughs> and now you have to put up with post commentary me uh, with the fan off this time because it's slightly less warm today. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I will admit later on I did give up turning the fan off, but um, I, I don't think you can hear it too badly. We'll stop talking about fans now as well because it's not particularly interesting. <laughs> Instead. Uh, we'll talk about MBTs, because I this is the first one I've built in this version of the game, and it's not something that I tend to do particularly often. Uh, more recently, I've done more modern things than I did like when I first started doing Sprocket stuff. I just generally find that I find, I find myself more interested in like World War II designs and uh, early Cold War designs than I do with like modern tank designs, because... I think just the sheer number of older designs, like, there's only a select few modern designs, really, um, that are relevant nowadays, if that makes sense. Uh, this was mostly, uh, you know what, I'm not going to tell you what it was based off. I, I, I posted some screenshots of this in my Discord and also in the Sprocket official Discord, uh, which, by the way, both will be linked in the description, uh, and also there's memberships now. Look at that, I've got the self-promo bit done. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I posted a couple pictures of this and people were saying, it looks like this, it looks like this, it looks like this, uh, and listing off like every single MBT in existence, which to me, Sounds like I've done a good job of doing a custom MBT, because if they can't picture <laughs> what it is, if they can't agree on it, then it's nothing in particular, right? Is that how that works? Maybe? Maybe not? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Engagement farming. There you go. I should also tell you to subscribe and hit the bell. Wow! So, one thing that would be really useful, uh, and I don't know if this is ever going to be possible, but... Uh, if we were able to move these, like, edges or points, like, uh, according to the reference plane would be so nice. Because what I want to do is I want to bring this down to, like, here. But I'm going to have to, like, do some maths or just tweaking until it looks about right in order to pull this off. Because it is just... Yeah, it's a bit fiddly. <laughs> also, this thing is huge. I'm, I'm pretty sure... This is even quite big for an MBT. Uh, I don't, I, I don't really do measurements when I build tanks, especially when I try and do like a, a replica tank. I just kind of go off feel more than anything, which a couple of you definitely bullied me for in the comment section, rightfully so, from time to time, because sometimes my tanks, well, they tend to be far too small rather than anything else. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't really measure, so I don't really know if this is big or small, but it feels big. <laughs> it covers the whole of the uh, platform, which I think is a pretty chunky thing. So I was trying to get like a circle here in the actual piece in order to get a hatch, but um, every time I create it, it appears like that. Um... So I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, which is a shame. Ah, oh, yay! We, we have our hatch! <laughs> we did it! Yeah, I cut out the fiddling with the circle tool, uh, which I had to do for like 25 minutes straight. To be entirely honest, that would have, you know, burned down to about six and a half minutes of just watching me fiddle around with some edges and flipping and pasting and blah 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 until eventually it worked. Uh, I, I made good use of the inversion tool uh, there. <laughs> Uh, and now we're putting on some uh, fenders, and as you can see, there's some weird uh, textures going on. So if you're wondering why I'm playing around trying to get the uh, the, the side panels to look normal, it's, it, that is why. Um, but yeah, just merging a face seemed to fix it. There are a couple situations that happen like this in the beta, uh, and it may come across as me being a little bit negative this video. I feel like I've brought up a lot of problems with the game in this video, but uh, that's probably just because it's been so warm. <laughs> I'm probably just grumpy, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's it's still it's still treating me pretty well. 0.2 compared to what a lot of people seem to be getting. 
There is a really annoying camera bug in this version of the game, where if you move your camera, like, sometimes it'll just clip into the floor and... Oh, it's driving me up the wall, man. <laughs> Please, prioritize that one. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I, I think the room was definitely a little bit warm. <laughs> Listening to that one back. Uh, yes, so, uh, where, where are we? Where are we? We're putting the engine deck on. Yeah, there we go. Modern engine decks are a little bit difficult to me because uh, they're they're very um how how do you how, I don't don't really know the words to go with what I'm trying to say here but um, unlike old engine decks which you can kind of get away with just like a flat panel and then sticking an exhaust out modern engine decks very much have so much going on but also with such fine detail and stuff that it's kind of hard to capture the uh, the actual feeling of a modern engine deck in Sprocket without spending a really, really long time on it, just fiddling about. Uh, and I, I think I did an okay job, but not the best in the world. Um, but fingers crossed you like it. I, I, I ended up quite liking it. Uh, I, I think I was basing a little bit off it, uh, a little bit of it off what am I saying? A little bit of it off the chieftain. That is a tongue twister and a half. Uh, and a little bit off, like, the Abrams? I don't... It was a little bit strange what I was going for. Uh, and I made these little indents to try and put the um, slats in to make them look a little bit normal. But obviously you can still see the hinge, so it didn't really do much for me, to be entirely honest. Uh, maybe a little bit of a waste of time. I did put the uh, exhaust inside there, which I think you could just see me putting in, uh, with the intention of the exhaust smoke coming out of the uh, vents instead of having like an external exhaust, because I think that's mostly how modern tanks do it now. Okay, I think there's something going on here with the hull. Uh, I'm not sure it's the best MBT hull you'll have ever seen. A lot of people are very good at doing MBTs, and I am not the most practiced at it, so uh, you've probably seen better, but uh, hopefully we can tie this all together in a way that makes it feel good. And I feel like, do those help? Those might help. <laughs> those help a little bit, I think. I don't know, man. <laughs> and now it's turret time. Uh, to be honest, the turret that I end up putting on this thing, I, I don't know what it is about it. I think it's not quite wide enough for the hull. Like, the, the hull is slightly wider than the turret, and modern tanks, the turret tends to completely fill the size of the hull, so maybe that's what I'm not sure about, but some, something's a little bit off. Overall, I think it's good. Uh, it's just that it, it feels a little bit strange, and uh, something a lot of people said once I'd put the turret on when I posted the screenshots of it is people were saying, uh, like, oh, this is um, like M60 feeling, so I don't know. Do you agree with that? Do you think it looks a little bit like an M60? Because I can kind of see it, like a super modernized M60 kind of thing. And is that a necessarily bad thing for it to look like a super modernized M60? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe that's more feasible than <laughs> whatever this tank is. Um, and uh, as I imagine most of you have either but decided that like, you're not going to guess what it is, or already guessed what it is, I will now say, uh, a lot of my inspiration for the hull of this thing actually came from, of all tanks, the uh, Korean K2 Black Panther. That is uh, South Korean, not North Korean. Um, <laughs> just to, you know, make that one clear. Uh, so if you managed to guess that one, then congratulations. Uh, small clap for you. But I don't actually think it looks that much like it, all things considered. Um, so... Yeah, a little bit of a diversion from it. I, I don't tend to do replicas. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. I like to do my own thing, if that makes sense, uh, without sounding a little bit insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think... Oh, yes. Oh, we're putting the baskets on. The, uh, the baskets are one of my favourite parts about this, the way that they wrap around the whole back of the turret. I do eventually realise that one of the baskets hasn't mirrored properly, and there you go. There it is. <laughs> Uh, I've completely lost my train of thought, uh, which I was talking about before, by the way. Completely forgotten about that, but um, yeah, that's just my sleep deprivation because it's too warm at the moment. 
Uh, I'll, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Uh, but this tank was also built while sleep deprived. So I am struggling to tell whether I like or dislike the turret on this thing, to be entirely honest. I, I almost feel like I've... <laughs> I feel like I've got to see it rotated, but I, mm, hmm, I don't know. I think I'm sticking with it. I think I'm happy with it, but uh, I'm not convinced it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> and so in order to cope with uh, not feeling like the best turret that I'd ever made, I decided to go all greebly and add greebles all over the side of it. Um, I, I don't know if these are technically considered gre greebles are like antennas and stuff, aren't they? What, what's the dictionary definition of greebles? Uh, it is a part harvested from plastic modeling kits to be applied to an original model as a detail element. Yeah, that counts. Greebles. Yeah, we're adding greebles. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fun word, to be entirely honest. I love the word greebles, uh, and and that's definitely what we're putting on the tank now. So, there you go. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. Greebles. Um, yeah, stowage, boxes, little lights. Uh, we got this kind of massive viewfinder box on top of the turret uh, and I think eventually I do actually decide to completely scale up the whole turret so literally select all faces and S scale it up uh, so it does get a little bit bigger than the one you're seeing right now but maybe you know maybe I should have gone further on that one I don't know maybe I didn't go far enough um also, do not fear, that is not how the mantle ends up. I do I do put a custom mantle on this thing. It's just right now it looks a little bit alien because it's completely empty. <laughs> okay, now I think we are cooking. <laughs> I think this turret looks good now. I, it's a bit weird that I've got all of this stuff slapped on the side. It feels weird to me, but... Uh, it's very much like modern MBT energy of like just greebles and stuff everywhere. Uh, I wish these could go bigger. These seem to be much smaller than they used to be. Uh, maybe I'm just building on a bigger scale than usual, but uh, I'd love some like metal bars to run along the outside of this, kind of holding in all the stowage, but uh, doesn't look like there's a piece that's going to be able to do that without me custom making one. And frankly, this is already taking long enough. <laughs> Okay, I think it's about time we do what I've been putting off and uh, we work on uh, getting a mantle on this thing, which I am a little bit scared of, but fingers crossed it all looks okay in the end. <laughs> uh. And this is officially the last uh, little fast forward bit that's going to be aesthetic parts of the tank so there you go if you've if you're getting tired of it then this is the last one we're putting in uh, the custom mantlet now uh, and this one I didn't actually have I don't think I had any reference images up for this part uh, in my head I was thinking of how the Challenger 2's kind of got this weird box on top of its gun uh, which I'm presuming contains rangefinders or like m stuff to measure the wind or whatever to detect how far off course your shot goes or something. Just, uh, computers and stuff, I don't really know. Uh, and I probably won't ever know because I'm imagining uh, whatever is stored in that box is extremely classified. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> but it, it once again, for Sprocket, it's, it's just more greebles. And that's another great opportunity for me to use the word greebles and you should be using the word greebles as well uh if you've made it this far in the video see if you can find a way to fit the word greebles into a youtube comment and anybody who hasn't watched this far into the video will be really really confused why literally everyone in the comment section or well you know 20 percent of people who watch this far in the comment section are uh, just talking about greebles and nothing else uh <laughs> uh you know that, that, that'll be funny uh Gun, yes, now we're putting the gun on. 120mm gun. I think that's a good size. Could have been bigger. Uh, we might put 130mm on on a, uh, a stream, which is something else we're doing for super members of the channel now. Uh, and I think normal members get access to those as well. Might be super members only. I don't remember my own tiers. I'll check up on that one. <laughs> uh, super members only, there you go. Uh, I, I have remembered. But yeah, that, that'll be fun. Now that has rounded it out quite nicely. Apologies if you can hear the fan, by the way. I have absolutely given up on turning it off while I'm talking uh, because I am still baking. <laughs> Um, regardless, we have a 120mm gun in here and plenty 
plenty of room to get a crew on the inside of this thing as well as if we head on inside uh, and turn that off we have a firewalled um little uh, uh area for the for the ammo to cook off should it get hit so we've got we've got some actual uh protection features we've got a uh, cook-off area. So this is where our turret ammo is going to go, and probably also a majority of the ammo for the tank, and uh, that should give us a nice quick reload time, and now, I believe it's basically time for human Tetris and getting the engine and gearbox and stuff all working, uh, and we've got plenty of room to play around with that, so this should be quite an easy human Tetris, in theory. Uh, everyone's favourite part of the video, obviously, human Tetris. We all love it. Yeah, and uh, I, I think I end up with only four people in this tank. Uh, you could, in theory, I, I mean, there is so much room left in this tank. Uh, you could definitely fit five people in here and have one guy as, like, a dedicated radio operator. Uh, then you've got a dedicated commander, dedicated gunner, and dedicated loader as well as your driver. That would be an incredible crew accomplishment, but uh, I've gone with four. And then on the left-hand side of the driver here, you can see me putting in firewalls. Uh, this is, well, in real life it probably would be a wet rack of ammo. Uh, instead, I just put a normal ammo rack in there. Uh, also, I, there's a couple of you who have probably played 0.20 who are shouting at me right now. Do the armor before you do the internals, because if you do the internals, your armor is going to mess with the internals of your tank. Yeah. Yeah, it will, won't it? Yeah. You've, re you've seen that much quicker than I did. I can't lie. <laughs> Ah, uh, I look. I'm gonna blame it on the heat again, but realistically, I'm just stupid. So uh, I will. I, I'll take the blame on that one. I just completely forgot to put the armor on uh, up until this point, which does mean I had to go back afterwards and uh, yeah, shift everything out about and remove a little bit of ammo here, especially at the back of the turret. Like that is, yeah, that's that's too much ammo for that that size of space that you're actually gonna have once you. Uh, add, you know, X amount of armor onto it, which, you know, it's the back of the turret. It doesn't need to be particularly thick, but also it still needs to be somewhat thick. You can't just have like five millimeters of armor there. Otherwise, you know, anyone shoots at you with a 7.7 .7 millimeter machine gun and bang, the entire thing is just gone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, you know, that's fine. We've got blowout panels, so therefore, it's perfectly okay if the ammo cooks off, right? That's that's how blowout panels work. There's absolutely no problem with getting... Yeah, maybe I should fact-check myself on that one. I, th I think it's still a bit of a problem. <laughs> Okay, so this is the interior roughly done, I believe. Uh, if we go on inside here, it's very hard to see, but we do have a firewall back to the engine and a little bit more space where I'm probably going to put another fuel tank. Um, we just need to kind of put the armor on now, so I'm going to decrease the size of the, some of these internal bits and bobs so that we can put some thick old armor on here. Uh, I could do actual proper spaced armor. I'm probably just going to make it maximum thickness because, uh, lazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, soon enough we should have an idea of how heavy this thing is and we can give it a test drive. I'm imagining we're going to... It's going to be heavy. It's going to be really, really heavy. <laughs> And here we go, we're into the final cutscene, and this is the I've realised that I need to add armour to this tank before I can call it done cutscene. Uh, yeah, oh well. Uh, here, I actually was using great uh, great use of the control right click, I believe it is, uh, which selects like a whole face of plates, but for some reason, um, just above the driver and the hatch decides that it's part of the top of the tank rather than the front glacis. I don't know why, because the front glacis is like 110 percent more in line with that plate than the top of the tank but there you go uh that's 0.20 quirks for you <laughs> uh, i imagine we'll be getting a uh, another update fairly soon as i believe hamish is back off his development break yet and no i haven't kissed hamish yet okay anyone who doesn't know that reference okay i don't know if hamish wants to i can't lie and i can't force it upon him so unless he wants to uh, I'm afraid we're not getting anywhere with that, but, um, so you're gonna have to leave my comment section about it, because I can't just force it on the man. Uh, you're gonna have to find him, and, and get him to agree. <laughs> and he's a very difficult man to get a hold of, I believe. Where has this even gone? Uh, I'm so sorry, Hamish, if you watch these videos. I don't know if you do, um, <laughs> but if you do, I'm so sorry. Uh... 
what were we talking about? Tanks? Something about tanks, probably. Uh, oh well. The, this is over. I can turn my fan back on and stop dying of heat stroke. Okay, and the internals and armor are in. We've had to do some reshuffling and took a little bit of ammo out because of the terror armor just, you know, getting in the way. Uh, but we still have the appearance and we now weigh a full 60 tons, which is... That is hefty. Uh, this is a very, very, very heavy tank. And uh, the turret traverse is not going to be spectacular as a result. Uh, I do imagine we can probably modify this turret drive. In fact, I might look to see if I can file edit that because that is gonna, that's really, really slow. <laughs> okay, one quick file edit later and uh, we should now be operating fairly standardly. <laughs> You can see the uh, turret is a little off-center by the way that my camera is moving, but that's not too bad. Uh, and as turns, I, you know, I haven't adjusted the gearbox, have I? <laughs> I should really do that. Okay, now with an optimized gearbox, we should be going quite a lot quicker, and I believe we should hit about 40 miles an hour, if I'm not mistaken, if my maths are correct. Uh, we have seven gears, so we're in sixth gear right now, and we're about to cross 30. We've got about 200 RPM left in this gear before we go up to seven, which we're in now. And, yeah, it's just kind of going to keep on going. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> uh, we do need to give this thing a, uh, a paint scheme, really, is uh, something that needs to happen, because it looks a little bit weird in this grey, I can't lie. Uh, it's a little bit flat on the upper front plate as well. I don't really know what to do with it. It's just lacking a little bit something-something. Uh, but, you know, I'm not an MBT guy. <laughs> and I think, all in all, we've designed something pretty cool. Uh, so hopefully you agree. And uh, it, it's pretty nippy uh, once it gets going. So I don't think this is too bad. Fire rate shouldn't be awful. Okay, that's not great. 12 seconds. Uh, you know crew skill issue honestly um they could they, they should just they should just load better uh so that is that's what we're gonna say <laughs> what we're gonna say on that regard uh i think i don't know why it turns so slowly and i thought it would turn a little bit quicker than that with its big starting gear but i guess you know 62 tons at the end of the day is still 62 tons of tank to turn around uh, and that is base spec so this is a pretty hefty piece of kit i can't lie Okay, last minute changes to the looks of it. We've uh, changed how the stowage is on the turret, and uh, we have also added a little bit of a camo scheme to this thing. And now, I'd say we have a fairly good-looking MBT. I don't know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, all I know is that this is is pretty much all for this episode. Uh, we're still waiting for combat in this uh, version of the game with geometric internals, but fingers crossed uh, you enjoyed this nonetheless without me fighting it. And uh, yeah, if you did, please have a like, comment, and or subscribe. And uh, don't forget that YouTube memberships are now a thing, so we may well uh, add some more ridiculous things to this on a stream later in the week, um, because that is a members-only bonus. But uh, for now, goodbye. And as always, a huge thanks to YouTube super members Marlon Gwecken, Stug3, and Terra, and a the remaining patrons Ambrose, Chemdrum, 135, Cody, Energy, Pete, Gavoon, Gamata, 929, Sad Cat, Just Casual, C71, Last of 11, Relax Panda, Rolls Bokken, Ryan Brody, Stug3, Terra, The Kinesian Emperor, Worth Cycle, and Zeit Wolverine. And a reminder of those of you who are still there to cancel. <laughs>